It is the end of the month of February. So guess what? That means I can share my top five fragrances of the month because I realized I did not do these for the past two months and we got to get back on track. So yeah, let's get on into it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everyone. The Sam Maria here. Yes, we're doing the top five fragrances of February 2024. And I'm excited about these because it's interesting. Whenever I do these type of videos, it's based around the fragrances that brought me the most joy that month. That's how that works. It could be something I've had for years. It could also be something I just picked up. So that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it cool. But as always, lipstick of the day today, everyone. I was feeling very cool tone makeup today because we're in that transitionary phase or whatnot, going from winter to spring and so yeah i wanted something that reflects that lipstick of the day is mac saint germain this is an oldie but goodie i call this pastel pink is what it is and i was feeling it of course i paired it with a liner and gloss all of the makeup details and full lip breakdown will be in the description box below so you don't have to look for it <laughs> next up we have fragrance of the day this is how i know the seasons are transitioning because i'm starting to experiment and play in more of my samples and things and yeah i wore a sample today this is from creed you all and this is creed Creed Carmina. Creed Carmina came out last year, 2023, and there was a lot of buzz about this one. I've previously spoken on it, but yeah, I'll be sharing my thoughts in more detail in another video now that I have a sample, and yeah, I'm wearing it. And yes, I do have more in-depth thoughts on it, so stay tuned to the channel for that. <laughs> And now without further ado, let's get into this top five and why they made the top five. So on the number five spot, yes, this is one that I've actually talked a lot about on the channel as of late. And this is from the house of Sniff and this is Sniff Vanilla Vice. Yes, this made the number five spot. Good thing about this fragrance is it already has a full dedicated review up on the channel. I definitely link it up top somewhere in the video so you can check it out if you haven't already checked it out. What's cool about this scent is that it is a woody vanilla but vanilla ice cream type of scent is what it is and I do enjoy it. This was a scent that I call a cozy scent. It was a very easy reach because I think of vanillas as very easy, very crowd cleansing type of scents. I wore this to throw on a sweatshirt, that type of thing, and just lounge around or maybe run a quick errand. That was this type of fragrance. And it brought me a lot of joy. It was cozy. It was easy. No fuss, no muss. And hey, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. <laughs> Apparently, it's still the wave, even going into 2024. So yes, the number five spot goes to Sniff's Vanilla Vice. It did bring me joy. <laughs> a quick refresher on the notes, as always, with Vanilla Vice from Sniff. It has key notes of ice cream, Madagascar vanilla, jasmine sandbag, amberwood musk, and orconox. So yeah, that's a refresher on the notes. So yeah, vanilla ice cream with a woody base is what it was. And that again is Vanilla Vice, y'all. In the number four spot, this is one that I had, had my eyes on and I recently acquired it around the holiday season, what have you. It was kindly sent over to me from the brand, but this is one that gifted or not, it was on my radar period. So you all, this is from the house of Carner Barcelona and you all have seen me talk about this one. This is Tardis, you all. Carner Barcelona Tardis. <sighs> A refresher on the notes y'all because this is one that's still relatively new so we're gonna talk about it a little bit more so we have top notes of egyptian geranium bulgarian rose rosewood and almond then we have mid notes of virginian cedarwood celery and plum and then we have base notes of venezuelan tonka bean musk and heliotrope let me tell you right now in this fragrance the almond is the star, the tonka bean at the base is the star, and the heliotrope as well. It gives this creamy, powdery type of scent. Now, let me tell you what this scent gives me. So aside from the notes, this gives me the soft life of my dreams is what it is. And I'm explaining. And it gives me, in particular, the soft life that is perfect for a transition scent going from winter into spring because it's creamy, it's clean, but there's a coolness to this scent at the same time. So this is warm. It was very effortless. It was very chic at the same time. It's very much, I'm wearing a nice buttoned white collared shirt, but I'm also on a yacht at the same time, eating fresh berries and things that have been brought to me and whatnot. And I'm just not mad. That is what TARDIS it smells like to me. And I'm enjoying this. I actually have a Carnival Barcelona discovery set as well that I've shown you all in a previous video. And if they are given what TARDIS is given, I'm very excited to explore the brand more, which you all know. I do sample series videos, so I'll be talking about that at a later date, but yeah. In the number four spot, Carnival Barcelona TARDIS definitely gave me the soft life in a bottle that is perfect for this transitionary season that we're in right now. Now the number three spot, she's like the most hype fragrance that is on this list and she's not new. And I've talked about her 
already. In the number three spot, this is from Memo Paris and this is Sintra. I've had this fragrance for over a year and this is one that is very well loved in the fragrance community. And I would argue that Sintra is like the most hyped fragrance from the brand of Memo Paris in my opinion. So fun fact as well, I've already done the dedicated review to Memo Paris Sintra. So you can definitely check that out if you want to, but refresh our nose. Mm. It has notes of orange flower, we have vanilla, and we have musk in here. There's pettigrain in here, red fruits and a roly. There's caramel in here, fluffy marshmallows. It, it has a lot going on, y'all. It's a lot and it works. What I enjoy about this fragrance is that the pettigrain this gives it a green opening. However, one thing about Memo Paris fragrances, they take you on a journey. And that's one thing I can say about this entire house because I've been deep diving into the house as of late. Yeah, definitely you gotta wear these scents. And Sintra is no exception to that rule because it starts out with an opening that's green, but as it transitions, then you get that rolling, you get the caramel, then you get the fluffy marshmallow, and it's the orange blossom. And the longevity of this fragrance, this one is singing right now and it's still sweet, but it's sweet done in a way that's very multifaceted and it just brings me a lot of joy. It gives me the complexity I want from a sweet scent. So that is why Central brought me a lot of joy and then I was just craving the sweets right now, particularly around Valentine's Day, I mean. It's a holiday of candy and chocolates and things, so it just kind of works. But at the same time, because again, we're starting to transition weather-wise, this is giving me both fixes. It's giving me the sweetness that goes well in colder weather, but it's also giving me the bright opening, the rolly, pettigrain greenness that I like for a springtime scent. So that is why Memo Paris' Sintra is in the number three spot and it brought me a lot of joy. And I'm starting to get a dent in my bottle, so I'm really happy about that. So again, Memo Paris' Sintra was the number three spot fragrance. In the number two spot, this was one, y'all. I got a full bottle of this during the holidays and I'm still excited about it. It was on the wish list for two years. The number two spot for the month goes to Killian's Rolling In Love, AKA the red bottle from Killian, my only red bottle from Killian in my collection. Y'all, this scent was my Valentine's Day scent, Valentine's Day night in particular, because that's when we had dinner and whatnot in quality time. So that's why for that reason, Rolling In Love, makes the list because it is a scent memory scent. First Valentine's Day is a married couple, married to the head of, of course, and we're out of town. We're in Philadelphia. Y'all have seen the video. If you haven't, definitely check that out where I share with you all everything I wore as well as fragrances I shopped and whatnot while I was in Philadelphia. But yes, Killian's Rolling in Love is the second spot, y'all. It has keynotes of almond milk, iris, and musk. It has amber in here too. It's this creamy powderiness about this scent that just brings me so much joy just and beyond. Because again, I've worn it. I've had samples of it, decants, what have you, before I had the full size bottle. But this was just full bottle worthy and it's still bringing me a lot of joy. Because what I must say too about this scent is that when I wore it, particularly for Valentine's Day and at other times too, but in this case, this month, Valentine's Day, it made me feel beautiful. Like I just really felt beautiful. And bonus point, the head elf loves this scent on me. He's complimented me wearing it before in the past, but he really enjoyed it for Valentine's Day. So that's why I'm like, this one is definitely head elf approved. And it just made me feel even prettier, you know? So absolutely for scent memory purposes, Killian's Rolling in Love was the number two spot fragrance for February. And the number one spot, which I'm very surprised about because y'all, I did something different with this one and wow. The number one spot for the month of February 2024, you all, goes to Memo Paris's Granada, you all. Check this out. And what's cool about this, y'all, this was a blind buy. Yes, a blind buy. Y'all know it's very, very rare that I do a blind buy. So I was like, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. But the way I kept reading up on this one, and this is an old scent. I wanna say this scent is like at least 10 years old. So again, just because something is a favorite doesn't mean it's brand new or it's just came out or not. Again, this scent is old. When you look up the date, it's been out there, okay? Yeah, Granada though, wow. It's been out so long that it's even had, it had an old packaging and this is like the new packaging. So that's how you know. But this, wow, possibly one of the best blind buys I have ever done, for sure. So let me get into the notes of this scent. So it has notes of pomegranate, orange blossom, there's jasmine sandback in here, there's bergamot heliotrope, musk, amber wood, whatnot. Y'all, let me tell you something. All that sounds fine and dandy, but how this fragrance was described to me and what I actually get to my nose, this is a honeyed orange blossom is what this is. I mean, even like the color of the juice, it's like this honey orangey color and that's what you get. It's powdery floral, cause again, white florals, 
but it's still a sweetness to it that's done in such an elegant way. This is going to be amazing, especially as a spring scent. And again, like I said, I'm transitioning right now and that's why this fragrance has been speaking to me. And what I got more so than anything is that when I first sprayed it, cause again, blind by, hey, you know, you never know what you're gonna get. This took me back to childhood. There's a vintage quality to this scent and there's a nostalgia to it, the way the florals and again, the honeyedness in here is done. Wow. Like it just makes me smile. It's just like sunshine and happiness in a bottle to me. That's just what it smells like. And bonus points, I've been wearing it about, wearing it a few times. The head elf also, like Lisa, you smell really nice. I really like that one. Again, not fish for a compliment because either he likes them or he doesn't. That's just how it is. But he also agrees, like, there's something about this. I really like that one. He's like, it smells very feminine, very classy. Other thing I want to mention about Granada, again, because this is a scent that's not really talked about because it's not new, whatnot. A lot of people have compared Granada to Parfums de Marley Saffronade, and let me tell you something. Granada is what Parfums de Marley Saffronade should have been. If you notice, I do not have that fragrance Saffronade I'm referring to. I've smelled it, I've tried it multiple times or whatnot, and it just does nothing for me. It's definitely not giving Parfums de Marley it's not giving niche price tag. It's just not for me. However, Granada though, I am moved by this and this was a freaking blind buy. <laughs> so highly, highly recommend Granada. If you all know this, remember back in January, I did smell a lot of Memo Paris fragrances and y'all to this day, and I've sampled even more since then and whatnot, I still have not smelled one that I absolutely hate. I might feel like, oh, I don't need a full bottle of it, but I don't just hate any of them. So that's why I'm feeling like, oh, 2024, it might be the year of Memo Paris. So I wanna say that that is my conclusion about Memo Paris's Granada. So number one, y'all, you will be seeing this more often. You've seen it in my weekly roundup, little shorts and things I do, but yeah. Granada is, whew, Yes. <laughs> so that wraps up my end of the month favorites, my top five for the month of February 2024. Let me know what were your top five fragrances. Drop them in the comments below. As y'all can see, we got a mix here of what's going on. We got newness, we got oldness, but hey, it's all about what brought me joy. So tell me what brought you joy in the month of February. And as always, I would try to read your comments and respond when I can. So until next time else, I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye y'all.